Oh, uh, just so much joy and just like this gratefulness. Place finisher gratefulness. I've just been wanting this for a while. You know, last year I obviously got a little bit of a taste of it in the DMR and then getting second in the eight. But I think I really just like wanted to feel that individual win. Um, so I've just kind of been dreaming of this for a while and wanting it really badly. So I'm just happy. Um, I wasn't too sure. I kind of have been battling a lot of like knee pain and earlier this week I kind of like strained my hammy a little in practice so I took a few days off and kind of wasn't sure what my body would kind of let me do. I wasn't really able to do any like fast strides so the race is kind of a stride of the week. Um, so I didn't really know what time it hit me but you know I felt really fit and that's like a college VR so I'm very happy about that. I haven't run as fast as I have in high school, so to come that close to it, I'm just happy. NCAA silver and outdoors in the 100 meter hurdles. She comes in ranked number one in this event from USC, Jasmine Jones. Yeah, I think, yeah, I kind of just went into it, just, I kind of thought she would take it out, just because she tends to do that, so I kind of, in my mind, was just like, okay, I'm just going to hang on for as long as I can. Obviously, she's been having an amazing season, so I knew whatever, like, she was pulling, like, us through was going to be good and going to be fast, so I just kind of wanted to be a part of that, and then coming off the turn, I think I always, like, I'm feeling very dead, and my, my form starts to go, and I kind of look a mess, so I tried to, in my mind, just, like, practice my wickets and my fast fit and just like really focusing on getting really the lights up um, and just running fast, so. Those were eight athletes competing in this women's 60 meter girls final. That might have been the loudest on the home stretch today. Did that help you power through? Yes, for sure. The atmosphere, my whole family is all here. My siblings, my parents, um, my aunt. So yeah, I just felt kind of all the love from the spectators and just my family. Juliet, you talked about, uh, you know, referencing high school PRs. I mean, that was like so many of those, like, you know, like New Balance races or a Brooks race, right? Like yeah. You, just, you know that if you can time, you know, time that move and you can swing wide, like really good things are going to happen. Like, I, I'm sure it wasn't occurring to you in that moment, but now that you reflect on it, it was like, yeah, like we can, we can go back and, and, and write that masterpiece again. Yes, for sure. I think, you know, it's always different, the transition to high school or from high school to college. Like, I think a lot of us in the NCAA, like, came from our high schools being, you know, the top ones there. Um, then kind of having to learn your new place, like, in the NCAA field is always challenging. Um, but, yeah, this kind of reminded me of those Brooks VR and, you know, New Balance Nationals times. Did your dad, did you have a chance to talk to your dad before you races? I saw, he came up and found me and he's like, I'm so nervous right now. I'm like, I don't think Juliet feels right now, but just, y'all, I honestly didn't see any of my family a ton before, but he gave me a hug when I was walking over to warm up, and that really just like I saw also my siblings. Um, so that kind of just pulled me off, like you know, reminder of why I do this and like doing it for something so much more than this. Year. In second, 781, Florida, and Aliyah Armstrong from LSU, 794. It's definitely a lot of pressure. Um, yeah, definitely, you know, having that, like, high school record um, and just, like, some of my last, like, high school races, it's definitely scary coming into this. But honestly, this this meet, at all, like, in particular, I didn't really feel that much pressure. I kind of felt like a lot of the light was, like, on Michaela, which I was kind of grateful for. Like, I kind of like when I'm kind of just under the radar and able to just do my thing and, like, you know, maybe surprise a few people. Yeah, what, what happened, like, outdoors last year? Because you had a pretty strong indoor season and outdoors season. Yeah, I think, you know, I, me and my coach kind of made the decision of doing the 15 instead of the 800 at regionals just to really work on that strength and kind of think about the longer, like, term goal. Like, I think last year our focus was USA's and I thought, you know, we thought doing the 1500 and doing rounds of the 1500 would really, like, help my strength in the 800, which I think a lot of today, you know, like, having that strength in the end really goes back to those 1500s and those milers. So definitely did not have the outdoor season last year that I wanted to, but I think in the big picture, I gained a lot from it. Yeah. Do you feel like you keep this season pretty, like, perfectly? It seems like you've been running faster every time now. Yeah, I mean, I kind of only did one 800 in the beginning of the season, and then I just really did a lot of miles, and then I just did my last 800 and then this meet. So I think kind of timing it with having those miles under my belt to help with my strength and then doing a few finishing touches on the 800 and towards the end of the um, season really helped me peak here. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know, in my head I was kind of like, gosh, I want to take it right now, but I really hope I, like, have it to take it and I don't just take it and then it gets taken back. Um, so I kind of had to build up the courage to kind of take that lead. Um, but once I did, I kind of just, like, had no regrets and just wanted to, you know, make it one last good push. Thank you.